Hey guys, welcome back to Bison Maths. I'm going to be doing a video today on how to integrate anything from A-level maths. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because a lot of students find integration very difficult. They find the individual skills quite easy or doable, but when it comes to putting it all together and figuring out which skill they need to use, it's a really, really challenging topic. So I'm going to talk you through the way that I think about integration and how I decide what technique I should be using and for which point I should be using it. Um, if you haven't already done the integration topics and you don't feel that strong on them, you're not ready to watch this video just yet. This is really what you should be doing after you've learned all of the different techniques that there are in A-level maths. I would also recommend watching the video that I have done for Pure Maths, which is everything that you need to memorise, because that's going to give you all of the skills and memory that you need to be able to access the kind of stuff I'm going to be talking about in today's video. I'm going to do this video in two separate ones. The first one is just going to talk through the strategies and I'm going to pick out 24 questions and I'm going to tell you which technique to use. And then in a separate video, I'm actually going to do those 24 questions using those techniques so that you can compare them to your answers. And one last thing before we get started is there's not only ever one technique to use, you can often use multiple different routes, but I think the order of techniques that I suggest is the most sensible. Okay, let's see um, what the different strategies are. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got a bit of an idea of kind of like a flow chart that should take you through the different techniques that you might use. So starting off with kind of just general expressions, the first question you want to ask yourself is, is it a standard result? And when I say standard results, these are things you should have already memorised if you're watching this video. Something else you might need to be careful of is, does it need scaling? And I'll talk about that when we look at some examples. Second question you might ask yourself is, if it isn't a standard result already, can I manipulate it to make it into a standard result? And you might like to think about trig ideas identities, expanding brackets, that kind of stuff to try and manipulate something. The third one that you then might say to yourself, if the answer is no to these previous bits, is can I use the reverse chain rule? And what I mean by the, but what I mean by the reverse chain rule is, is the numerator the derivative of the denominator, in which case you can apply this rule, or is one factor of a product expression related to the derivative of the other? And this will become a bit more um, obvious when we're having a look at some examples. If you don't know what I mean by reverse chain rule, some other people call it by inspection or integration by recognition, but in all of my videos on my channel, I refer to it as the reverse chain rule. Then it kind of splits into two different sections. I've got three different techniques that you might use if it's a fractional expression. Um, obviously, these still may apply for fractional expressions, but if none of these have worked, then what I would suggest you try and do is think about splitting the numerator. Now, you can only split the numerator if there's a single term in the denominator, so you can't do this technique all the time. If you can't split the numerator, you might want to think about trying to do partial fractions. Now, you can only do this if the denominator is factorised or factorizable. And the last option for fractional expressions is that you can maybe try doing algebraic division. With algebraic division, if it's an improper fraction, that is definitely what you should be trying in that question. If it's not a fractional expression and you can't do a standard result, make it become a standard result, or do the reverse chain rule, you've probably got a product expression where integration by parts is going to be a good idea. When I say product expressions, I mean an expression where there are two things being multiplied together. When you apply integration by parts, for the u term, you should try the ln term as the priority. Sorry, you should choose the ln term as the priority for u. And then after that, you should pick a polynomial term. Um, you shouldn't really pick the trig term. If all of the answers to all of these questions is no, your last resort is substitution. Substitution should not be the go-to kind of thing for this kind of um, topic. It really is your last resort. So... This is the flow of different things that we've got here. And let's try and have a look at some questions and see if we can figure out what they should be. Like I just said, I'm not going to do the entire question, I'm just going to say the technique, and then I'm going to, in a separate video, actually do them all. So I've got these 12 questions here, and I want to integrate the following expressions with respect to x. And then on the next page, I've got another set of 12 questions. Uh, so in total, we've got 24 questions that we're going to have a look through. OK, so let's have a look at this first one that we've got here. We want to integrate sec squared x. Well, it's a single kind of term one that we've got here. And actually, I'm hoping you're going to recognise that this is just a standard result. The reason I know this is a standard result is because you should have memorised that tan differentiates to sec squared. So that's going to be pretty easy. 
The second one, 3x plus 2 to the power of 5. Well, there's no kind of product or anything going on here. This is absolutely going to be a standard result kind of question. However, what you will need to think about there with this one is you will need to do some scaling. Like I said up here, does it need scaling? Yes, number 2 is going to need some scaling. Now, number three, when I look at this expression that I've got here, I've got x and I've got 1 plus x squared. Now, thinking through the checklist of the different things that we have here, it's definitely not the standard result. and I don't think I can manipulate it. So I'm going to just say to myself, can I use the reverse chain rule? And the question I'm going to ask, because it's not a fraction, is one factor related to the derivative of the other? When I look at this one that I've got here, this is one of the factors and this is another factor. And clearly there is a relationship between them because the derivative of this inside bit of the factor is going to be 2x. And 2x and x are related by some kind of scaling. So this one is going to be a reverse chain rule type question. Of course, there's going to need to be some scaling as well. Now, this one that I've got here, it doesn't really look like a standard result at this point. But I did say that one of the things you should try thinking about is manipulating it to see if you can make it into a standard result. I've said thinking about trig identities, and you'll notice in this one, the numerator looks pretty familiar and the denominator looks pretty familiar. So this one is actually just going to be a standard result. But of course, before we get to the standard result, there's going to be need, there's going to need to be some manipulation. And that manipulation is going to come from doing a trig identity. I wonder if you can think to yourself what number five might actually be. Well, it doesn't look like it's a standard result. It doesn't look like it's a chain rule because 2x is not the derivative of this kind of expression that we've got here. And then that moves us into the next part of this kind of flow diagram. Well, it's not a fractional expression. It is a product expression because we've got two things being multiplied. So I think we're going to use integration by parts and we're going to choose the polynomial part. We're going to choose the x part as the thing that we select for you. So this one is going to be an integration by parts kind of question. Now, looking at question six, um, I don't think this is going to be a reverse chain rule type question because this doesn't appear to be related to the derivative of this. So I think this is gonna take me down into question four of the flow diagram on the fractional expressions. And I think because there's a single term in the denominator here, I can just split the numerator. Now, when I say split the numerator, I mean split it so that you're gonna do an x over the square root of x minus one over the square root of x. And then after you've done that, you can use some of the other types of techniques that we've got here. So this is definitely a split the numerator type of technique. Now let's have a look at question seven. Okay, this doesn't appear to be a standard kind of result, so always check reverse chain rule. And the sine x here is related to the derivative of e to the cos x, because e to the cos x is going to differentiate to minus sine x e to the cos x. So there's definitely some kind of um, relationship between them. So this is going to be a reverse chain rule type question. Now, number eight, this definitely isn't going to be from the earlier points. It's definitely going to be something in this section that we've got here. Well, it doesn't look like I can split the numerator and it doesn't look like I can do partial fractions. And because the fraction is improper here, because the numerator has a degree one and the denominator has a degree one, I would do algebraic division in this one. And then I may need to apply some of the other techniques. So this one, I would do an algebraic division. Now, question nine that we've got here, there's probably a few different things you could try, but I always like to do them in the order on my list. So it doesn't look like there's a standard result here. So you must check reverse chain rule. Now, when I say reverse chain rule, I want to investigate the derivative of this part and see if it's related to this part. Well, the derivative of x squared plus one is just two x, which is definitely related to x. And when I say related, I just mean that it is scaled by a factor. So this one is going to be another reverse chain rule, which is an incredibly popular technique in these kinds of questions. OK, question 10, definitely not a standard result, definitely not reverse chain rule. There's a big clue in the denominator with the fact that it is factorised. The fact that it is factorised means I can do 4b, I can do partial fractions and then use some other techniques for this one. So this is going to be partial fractions. After you've applied partial fractions, you can then integrate each of those individual parts separately. OK, question 11. Well, it's a fractional kind of term, so it looks like it's going to be one of my four A, B or C's, which was either split the numerator, partial fractions or algebraic division. I think this one is very similar to question six. So for this technique, I am going to split the numerator. 
Again, when I say split the numerator, that's just going to be x over x plus 1 over x, because you can do that with fractions. Now, number 12. Number 12 is looks like it should be a standard result. So let's just talk about number 12. It isn't a standard result, though. It doesn't belong in the list of things we know how to integrate. And you can't really do any manipulation to this. And I can't do the reverse chain rule, because it doesn't really feel like there's anything to do there at all. So you can't do any of these things because it's not fractional. And I don't even know what you would do for substitution. So ln x is a very special case. ln x is one where you would always do integration by parts and you choose the ln term for u. So this is a special case for ln x. So I'm going to write here special case. And you would use integration by parts. This is where you would say that u is ln x and your v dash would be 1. If you think about this, this is 1 multiplied by ln x. So I wanted to put in here a special case type question that doesn't quite fit into the flow diagram, and it is ln x. Okay, so moving on to question 13 now, we've got 1 over x root ln x. Well, it doesn't appear to be a standard result, and we've got a product of different things here, but we almost always need to check if there is a reverse chain rule. Now, when I have a look at this expression, I see that I've got ln x, and I know the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. So this is definitely telling me there's going to be some kind of reverse chain rule here. You may find it easier if you rewrite it as like an ln x to the power of a half. We can clearly see that this 1 over x is the derivative of that second function that we've got there. Okay, so question 14. Let's see what we can do for this one. Doesn't look like a standard result. Doesn't look like I can do reverse chain rule because the numerator is not the derivative of the denominator. And that then puts me into this section. So I can't split the numerator. I can't do partial fractions. And I can't really do algebraic division because it's not even a polynomial. So I think for this one, we're at our last resort here. We're going to have to do some kind of substitution. So for this one, I'm going to write down substitution. If you want a bit of a hint so that you can try this question yourself, the substitution that I would try is u equals 1 plus e to the x. I think that's going to be the best one. Question 15. OK, so not a standard result. Um, it's definitely a product of two things. And it's um, that's making me think that it's going to be the technique that we've got on the right hand side of that flow diagram. That's making me think that this one is going to be a by parts question. And the thing that I will pick for u would be x, meaning that sec squared is the v dash or the derivative of v. Definitely not a reverse chain rule because this is not the derivative of this one that we've got here. OK, so question 16. Um, let's always go through that list. It's not a standard result. Before you check anything, we want to see, is it a reverse chain rule type question? And the question that we should ask ourselves is, is the numerator related to the derivative of the denominator? Well, the denominator that we've got here would differentiate to 4x. And so, yeah, the numerator is related to it. In fact, it's just scaled. So that one means we can do here a reverse chain rule type question. That one makes me think it's going to go towards like an ln of 2x squared minus 3. Anything where the denominator um, differentiates to the numerator is going to go to an ln. So 17, that might make us think a really similar thing because the denominator here has an x squared um, and x squared differentiates to 2x. So the most common mistake that people make when they think this is a reverse chain rule is they just write ln of x squared minus 3 squared. And that does not work for this at all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this and see if it helps. If we write it as 2x, x squared minus 3 to the minus 2, you'll now see that the 2x is the derivative of x squared minus 3. But the way we integrate things to the power of minus 2 is we just in increase the power. So it's just going to go to x squared minus 3 to the minus 1 plus some kind of scaling that's going to be outside the front. So it's a reverse chain rule, but reverse chain rule in fractions does not mean it just goes to ln. You may need to rewrite it as a product. Question 18. This one doesn't look like the reverse chain rule because x squared is not the derivative of anything to do with this e to the 3x. So I think this one, because we've got a product of two things here, I think this one is going to be by parts. Now, I know for a fact that when I do by parts, this x squared is going to differentiate down to an x type term. And I'm going to have another thing that looks like this that also will require by parts. So this one is going to be a by parts question, but you're going to perform, perform that technique twice. 
let's have a look at question 19. So going through that list, it doesn't appear to be a standard result here. Before we check about whether we should do by parts, I think we should see if this is going to be a reverse chain rule. Now, I might like to rewrite this as sine x, cos x, all cubed. And indeed, this is going to be a reverse chain rule question because sine x is related to the derivative of this cos x being cubed. So we're going to do this in more detail in another video, but this is going to be a reverse chain rule. It's going to be something like cos x to the power of 4 with some kind of scaling. So integrating this bit as we expect it to be. Now, tan squared that we've got here. So the first thing we should say is, is there a standard result? Do I know anything that differentiates to tan squared? Nope, I don't know anything that differentiates to it. So I think we should see if we can try and manipulate it. This one is actually just going to be a standard result, but it's going to be from a trig identity. What you're going to use for this is we know that 1 plus tan squared x equals sec squared x. So you can make this into something that we can actually integrate. OK, we're nearly there. Question 21 here. Um, I don't think this is a standard result. I don't think the numerator is related to the derivative of the denominator. I don't think I can split the numerator. I don't think I can do partial fractions. So I think for this one that we get here, we should be doing some algebraic division. So that's the technique that I would use for this question. Question 22. Okay, so the derivative of this denominator, this x plus 1 part, um, that's not going to differentiate anything to do with x. So I don't think we're going to be able to do the reverse chain rule. And it doesn't look like I would be able to split this up because of the square root sign. It doesn't look like I could do, could do partial fractions or even algebraic division. So this is one of those questions where we are going to end up at our last resort, which is substitution. So for question 22, we're going to have here a substitution. Have a think to yourself what you might pick. I would probably pick that u is going to be the square root of x plus 1 for that substitution. Almost there now. Question 23. Um, it definitely looks like it's going to be in that fractional kind of section. I think, though, that I would spot something about this denominator. I spot that this denominator factorises to x plus 2, x plus 1 which makes me think that I should be doing partial fractions on this. So I would do partial fractions and then I would try and integrate those bits that I've got there. And then to finish off with question 24, sine squared x. This is one that I would try and memorise the identity that gets used for this because this is a standard result. And if you have watched my video about everything you would need to memorize, you should use the rearranged double angle formula for this. Sine squared x, you should memorize, is the same as a half minus a half cos 2x. And that is just a standard result that you can integrate. So in summary, what we've got here for these expressions that you've got, I would really, really, really want you to use this kind of order of stuff. If it is a standard result, just go in for it. Make sure you do the correct scaling. If you can manipulate it, make sure you do. If you can use the reverse chain rule, that is probably the most common one that comes up, and it's not often the one that people think about. Then you've got these things here for fractional and product expressions, and your last resort should be substitution. So if you want to see me go through these questions, check it out in the second video that I'm going to do on this. Um, and just make sure you always go through that checklist for how you should be integrating these things that we've got here. OK, good luck. I've also included the PDF of this in the Bison Maths Google Drive, which is linked on the About section of my homepage. And there's also some worksheets that have been created by a man called Dr. Tim Honeywell, who has got 100 integrals and their solutions. It's called Lots of Lovely Integrals, and it's also in the Bison Maths Google Drive. So in the second part of the video, you'll see me working through all of the examples that I just showed you here. If that seems like something that would be useful for you, go and check it out now. If you found this useful and you like the kind of stuff that I'm producing for you here, do make sure that you subscribe to my channel, like this video and look out for more content that will be coming out soon.